Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Heather and this is Create Your Own Cozy. On this week's video, I got to hang out with a longtime friend of mine. Her name is Farah, and I just love her so much. And we both have three kids. Her oldest just graduated high school, so she has been so busy. And we just keep crossing paths, and we get together for an hour, an hour or two, but we never quite get to finish conversations. But this week, we got to spend seven hours together. We got to work on her grandmother's Hoosier cabinet. It was her grandmother's and then her mother's and then now hers. And while she loved the nostalgia of it, she wasn't in love with the color of it. Now, here's a little history of this cabinet. It started out white. Her grandmother had it white. And then when her mom got it, of course, she's like, I don't want the same thing that my, my mom had all those years. Henry, I don't want the same thing that my mom had all these years, so I'm gonna pay somebody to strip it down. So then she stripped down the whole cabinet to be a wood finish, and in true mother-daughter fashion, Farrah's like, I mean, I like it, but I kinda of wanna change it for my own house. So we didn't negate the stripping of the furniture. It was just a little bit too orange, and you will see in this before picture, you will agree, there's a very orange tone to this wood. So we have been talking about doing this piece of furniture probably for more than a year. And in the beginning, it had a smell to it like flour, like it had kept flour in it before, right? So there's this flour undertone. Um, there, was, there was a smell to it. But after being in her warm basement for over a year, just kind of sitting there, the, the smell's gone. So, you know, there's something to get rid of smells from old furniture. You just let it kind of air itself out. So we didn't have to worry about the smell anymore, but we did have to worry about the orange tone. So what we did, and I've done this a number of times with some with my furniture, is we use this liming wash. And this liming wash is very good to use with wood furniture. It can lighten the grains of the wood and really bring it out. Um, I will show a picture of an armoire that I did. What I did with this one is I stripped it first, and then I did some liming wax to it. Um, I currently have a number of projects in my garage. I'm trying to work on some more big furniture pieces, you know, when it's 94 degrees out. Um, but this first table that I'm showing you here, I am stripping the legs down. It goes with the same set of the armoire that I just showed you. And I'm stripping the legs down and going to put liming wax over that. That's going to be a video coming up. Still trying to decide what to do with the top of the table. There is an injury on the top of the table. And I don't think that if I fix it, that I can keep it stained. That's my, my intent was to strip it and lime wash, uh, use the liming wax for the top of it. But there is an injury that I have to overcome. So I might have to paint the top and just have like the, the wood on the legs. Stay tuned for that. Um, and then this round table that I have in here is going to be, I believe next week's video. I'm going to, I got that for free from a neighbor. Um, that was just getting rid of it so I'm gonna update that and get that in my booth so I can get some big furniture pieces in there and hopefully sell also if you guys see all the time Henry's little perch um, that used to be a very orange wood color as well and I stripped that down and did liming wax so it is a very versatile technique that I want to show you today and I want to thank Farah for being a great sport and allowing me to put her in my video and I had so much fun with her. Now it did not take seven hours to do this project. We just got to spend seven hours together, but it did take it like if we just did the liming wax, that probably would have been a two hour project, but we decided to add to the inside. So we had to go drive and get some paint and some lunch and we did a beautiful, um, inside stencil with this gorgeous green color. You know it's one of my favorites. So if you want to see how this project turned out, stick around. 
So the product that I'm using today is Brie Wax Liming Wax. I got this on Amazon and I'll include a link in the description box below. You can also check your local hardware stores and see if you've got that option around you. But I basically just use a shop rag and put the put that directly in the liming wax. It is very much um, a similar consistency to like the DIY white wax. But the difference is, and I did a test with the DIY white wax. I should have recorded it, but I didn't. I feel like this liming wax is is more for like a raw wood or to cover up wood where the DIY white wax is more for changing colors of paint if that makes sense. So this added much more of a white color to this project. As you can see it started in this very orange color family and that is what my friend Farah was trying to get away from. So Another thing with this really old piece of furniture is they use different pieces of wood, um, you know, like on the side and stuff. And right here, this, this big panel took the, the wax a little differently. So you kind of have to play around with it. You can see I'm just kind of putting as much as I can on there and rubbing it in so that there's just like this almost like a white sheen across it and it really did take out the orange color which was our whole point and while preserving the work that her mom had already done to uh, get this thing stripped so this is the garage part that's what fair calls it the little garage and I did the same process on here I ended up doing, we, we ended up doing about two coats of lime wash to a lot of the areas. It seemed like the sides took it very well, but like the front cabinet doors and this garage area needed a second coat. Um, it was easier to do two coats of this rather than overdo it with the first coat. And we also decided since there wasn't an easy place to stop and you could see this, this bottom, f um, bottom when you close that garage door to go ahead and have the bottom um, of this space be covered with the lime wax as well. So this is my second coat just getting it in there making sure I'm rubbing it in it's not gooping up. You can work with this for quite a bit before it, it cures. We did have baby wipes handy in case there was like a smudge or something um, but you really do have quite a while to work it in. We decided that the hardware that we had still on there, the hinges and stuff, we would just cover it in the white wax to kind of dull the look of it to make it look like it had all been like bleached by the sun in a good way though, you know? So fair clean this piece really well before I came over, but this has been in her grandmother's home, in her mother's home, and now in her home. So we noticed that when we put the wax on there, there would be these certain areas that just did not want to grab the wax. And so you can see right here, I am kind of, it does go into focus, but I am kind of just like finger painting with the wax, very light strokes and almost trying to make like little brush marks. And the thing is, like once the wax is on there a little bit, you can rub it out where it won't come off as easy as when you first put it on, if that makes sense. So you let it kind of dry or harden a little bit because the the door on the left was taking this wax so much different than the, than the center door. So I just kind of forced it to hold and to, to keep it in there. And then when I rubbed it, I almost overworked this one area over here and the wax did not want to stick at all so I just kind of dabbed it in there and then did this like little brush mark and the thing is you can really overthink it um, one thing that I reminded Farah during this project is you get so focused when you're doing this but when you step back you're not going to focus on all these little areas you're going to see the whole piece as a whole 
So we would step away and then go back to it. And that was kind of the best thing so that it didn't get overworked like I was doing right here in this area. Just really overworking it. Let's step back. Let's see if it really bothers us in the scheme of things when we look at the big piece. Now the inside we painted with just white indoor acrylic paint that um, I got from Walmart off the shelf. Her plan is to put this on her back sun porch. So we wanted to cover the insides with white and then we did the liming wax on the inside of the doors. Just thought it was a good look. She's hoping to have it open a little bit on the porch and display some of the stuff. So that's what we did. Then guys, look at this color I found. Fusion Angle Nook. Yep, it's very much like apothecary DIY paint. It's very much like Sweetie Jane, the Sweet Pickens Melt paint. So we're going with it. I got it for one of my projects and we went and picked it up at my house um, and came back and thought, you know what, let's do some stenciling. So she looked through all my stencils and I've had this thing forever. I can't even tell you where I got it. I found something similar on Amazon that I'll link in the description if you're interested in this kind of a thing. But you really can find these stencils anywhere. And you just have to be patient and not expect perfection. And we only did one coat of, of this Fusion Mineral Paint here and just married up the stencil. And oh my goodness, it added such a beautiful green color to this wood and white look. And oh my gosh, we are so in love with how it turned out. The stencils can be a little tricky in the corners. Um, best, best advice is to either use um, painter's tape or to kind of squish it in there. And then when you get to those corners, hold it down with your finger. But... Um, one thing, as you can see, Farrah's doing a lot of this work and I get to do the camera work, but she said something that I provided was the encouragement that you're not ruining your grandmother's piece. It's just paint. We can always fix it. And guys, look at this. There's a before picture with the orange. The orange is gone and we've got this beautiful updated piece. She's going to go grab some knobs Hopefully I'll get um, a final picture in here with the knobs, but look at how beautiful she turned out. Okay guys, what do you guys think? Isn't Farrah precious? I am so thankful that I got to spend the day with her. I got to update this family heirloom to be more her style. 
I'm excited. She had one plan for it when we were doing it. And then at, now that it's turned out this way, she's rethinking where she wants it in her house. I cannot wait to see where it ends up so that she can see it and appreciate it all the time. It's not gonna be back in the storage area anymore. This is the fun part about these heirlooms. If you update them and you actually make them more your style, you use them in the house and you see them all the time and you remember the memories with your with your grandmother and your mother that went along with that piece of furniture. So I know that a number of you guys have these pieces in your house. So consider this technique of the liming wash where you can change the tone of the wood but still have the, the piece intact. There are so many things you can do with this. You can do the liming wash and then do a stain over the top or do a paint wash over the top and just kind of mess with the colors. And guys, just remember that you are an artist. And one of the things that Ferris said was encouraging, there's, there's not much you can't recover, right? If you make a mistake or what you perceive as a mistake, you can always paint it again. The biggest the biggest challenge is, am I gonna paint this piece? And once you've made that decision, you can always paint it again. And even if you decide you want it back to the wood, you can strip it. Like nothing is ever too far gone, which is why I love restoring furniture so much because it's such um, a good picture of we are never too far gone. There's, there's always something that God can turn away or that God can etch away or, or change about you or redeem in you. So I like to think about that as I redo these pieces and spend time with these precious friends. Guys, thank you so much for joining me this week. I hope that you're having an amazing summer and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. Somebody got a summer haircut. Did I get a haircut? Where's your sweet boy? Where's, where's my papa? Where's your, where's your sweet boy? Oh, say hi. Say hi, everybody. Hi. Mm -hmm. What are you doing, Kenny? Oh, he says, I don't want to. I just want to. You don't like, you don't want to be on camera right now? <laughs> I don't want to be on camera right now. <clears throat>